Hey folks, welcome back. Uh, what you're looking at right now is the first stage of the Baker City Cycling Classic, a hilly stage race in Oregon. Uh, one thing that you'll notice right away is that I've changed up the data that's at the bottom of the screen. I forgot my heart rate monitor for this race, so we just have power and speed. Uh, but you can see the elevation profile of the race um, down below. Um, I also forgot to charge my power meters, so we'll see the power drop out right at the end of the race too. That's a bummer. Um, so right now we're rolling on a flat headwind section at the start of the race. Uh, there's a short climb in the first half of the race. Uh, you can kind of see the layout here. Um, and that uh, those short climbs are going to be a little factor. We'll look at those. But the big climb, Catherine Creek, is going to be the main factor of the race. Um, yeah. So the big teams to keep an eye on here, Expeditors in the dark blue kit. Uh, we also have Alto Velo from California in a sort of yellow-orange kit, and uh, Team George's in the black and red kits. Uh, there's also uh, Pacific Office Automation has a, has a good crew here too, so I'm looking out for them. They kind of have a blue and yellow kit. Um, my team is Gene Johnson. We have five guys, including myself. Uh, I was our favorite for this stage. Um, and I was instructed from my director to uh, just sit in and watch at this point and wait and see what happens. So right now we're on Jimmy Creek Climb. This is the first of two short climbs. Uh, as you can see, it starts out pretty easily, but it isn't long before the pace picks up and the group starts rolling at about six watts per kilogram in the draft. Everyone's on the gutter on the right side of the road because we have a crosswind from the left. At this point, a break of seven made it up the road. I just sort of watched it go away and we're rolling with the group. All right, on to Telegas, the second of the shortest climbs. Um, uh, I started closer to the front uh, in this one because I wanted to make sure I was ahead of any splits that might form. Uh, but everyone was fresh and motivated, so it wasn't really a problem. Here we're just rolling over the top of Telecast to feed zone number one. I didn't really need a feed, so I stayed out of it. But on review, I really could have used a fresh water bottle to spray myself. It wasn't that hot of a day, but it turns out climbing these hills in the sun gets pretty hot. Uh, so right now we're just starting the false flat of despair, or at least that's what I call it. I thought this would be super hot and hard, but it turns out that this section was a lot easier than I expected. Expeditors started to chase the brake uh, gently, and so it was pretty easy to sit in. I averaged like 200 watts in this section, but we actually uh, averaged 23 miles per hour while still climbing about 700 feet. All right, on to Catherine Creek. This is the big climb of the day. My director thought that this was going to be d the deciding climb, and my assignment was to try to try to make group two going over the the, the top. Uh, it starts out hot, lots of watts and lots of heat. Uh, there's something about this slight tailwind in the black pavement that makes it feel like an oven. This climb takes about 10 minutes, and the first two are really fast. I average about six watts per kilogram in the draft for the first couple minutes before deciding that I should probably let this go. You know, I wasn't dying, but I knew that I couldn't sustain the pace for 10 minutes. Here we can see the split start to form as the uh, front group separates from the rest of us. I think it was maybe seven, seven that get away from us and start going up the road. You know, you can see I'm still doing decent watts here while the separation starts to form, but I know that I'm not going to be able to sustain this for 10 minutes. So I decide about right here that I'm going to, I'm going to let this roll and I'm going to put in, put in my own pace, see what happens. Luckily, this group that I'm with uh, was interested in trading pulls. We were a little bit disorganized, but we were mostly able to keep it together. Here, I'll speed things up so that we can watch us uh, chase this uh, chase this group and try and see if we can catch them before the top. Yeah, despite our 
easier pace at this point. I think that the group in front of us also switched to an easier pace. And so they don't really gain much on us. You can see me going to the front to take a pull. We got somebody who fell out of the front group. So maybe there's only five or six left up there. As you can see, we're a little disorganized. People sort of falling apart. You know, there was a decent draft um, at 15 to 20 miles per hour on the way up this climb, but you still had to do a lot of work despite being in the draft. So as we were coming to the top of this, I was starting to think about first the, the feed zone that's at the top of this hill and the descent that's on the other side that we don't actually have to catch back on before we get to the top because I'm confident in my descending skills. All right, here we go. We're just entering the feed zone now. We're at the top of Catherine Creek and we're just about to do a descent. And so I decide to take it easy and I actually grab two bottles here. Uh, you know, one to just spray myself and another one to throw in the cage. see here I'm chilling while my my uh, chase mates are jumping ahead to make sure that they make contact with the group but I know I'm gonna use this descent to catch back on so I'm gonna take a moment to catch my breath before I go you know and one thing that's really nice about the descent is that now now that there's wind moving over me I'm cooling off really fast like I was covered in sweat coming over the, the top of that climb and now all that sweat is evaporating and I am cooling off fast. And so I do end up putting in a couple little efforts on this descent to make sure that I hold my speed. Um, but those, those efforts are way, way easier than they would have been on the climb. to almost 60 miles per hour. Oh, I love descending. Although this descent was distinctly not technical, there was no reason to grab brakes at any point here. Which did not play in my favor. I think that I would have had a much easier time catching back on if there were corners. Because I'd bet on myself in a descent. You can see I'm gaining on them pretty quick right now. But it's starting to flatten out, and so I want to give it a little push to make sure that I do get there before uh, before people start pedaling. And just as I planned it, as the road starts to flatten out, I am just getting onto the back of the group. And feeling so much better. I have a little bit of rollers and a bit of a descent before uh, the next test to see if I can hang with this group. So just as a status right now, we have, I don't know what, nine people in this group, and there's seven people up, in, up the road in a break that went earlier in the day. Um, I heard going over the top in the feed zone, somebody yelled out that the break had a four minute lead. So I was kind of expecting that we weren't gonna catch them and that I had, I had missed the break of the day um, and that the break was gonna make it to the line. But it turns out that uh, the George's team in this in this group wanted to roll really hard, so we ended up rolling really fast down this uh, downhill downhill tailwind section. And it was great for me because sitting in the draft on a on a downhill was pretty easy.
I even uh, pulled some turns with the group, mostly mostly using my inertia to uh, to roll through. All right, now we're jumping ahead to the last two climbs. So I label this one Medicinal Springs number two. I, I made up my own names for, for these climbs, just looking at things that were next to them. Um, so I'm not sure if the locals call it this. But uh, so what's happening right now is we can see somebody just a little bit up the road. We're catching somebody who had gotten dropped from the brake. Um, you'll see in just a moment uh, him ahead of us with his number flap swinging around. And so this is a good sign, like, holy cow, we railed those downhills, uh, and we must have made up some time on the brake if we're catching people that are off the back of the brake. Uh, so I'm starting to get excited right now, thinking like, aha, maybe, maybe I have a chance in this race. But there's still a lot of climbing to go. Uh, I think there's maybe uh, 700 feet, 900 feet of vertical in this this sort of double step climb of the two medical springs uh, climbs and we're as you can see on the elevation chart on the bottom we're on the second second bump catching this rider you know we're going quite easy at least in the in the draft it's quite easy there's a strong crosswind here but um, it's it's a uh, easy to get a, a decent draft uh, as people are People are kind of spread across the road. We're going to see that change in a little bit, though, once things get a, a bit faster and everybody starts guttering each other. All right, now you can see up the road. We can see the lead group. There they are. And that means that it's going to get fast. Because since everybody can see that lead group, they want to roll much, much harder. And so I'm trying my damnedest to stay in the draft. You know, I'm holding the particular position so that I can make sure that I don't, I don't get pushed, pushed off of the echelon. The wind is coming from the right to the left. And so I'm, I'm getting a really decent draft right here, but it's still, still hard work in the heat. This uh, SUV gets between us and the us and the lead group, and uh, at some point, people start yelling at the SUV driver to get out of the way, and that's when we make the connection. And with that, we are all together. I am now connected to the front of the group, but I'm a little bit gassed. And right here, I don't know why I just uh, I just couldn't match the surge for a second. I just had to had to chill out for for a few seconds. You can see I kind of swerved there. That was not intentional. I was looking down at my front tire, thinking about my fate. Um, but as I, I look ahead up the road here, and I see that there's a little valley, um, and the draft is definitely going to matter for that. I give it one little surge to make sure that I get back onto the group. But I am conserving energy. I want to do as little as possible. And uh, so you can see here, I start to freewheel, even though I'm not back on the group, I'm taking risks because I want to push the pedals as little as possible. But we're not quite done with the climb yet. You know, I know that there's going to be one final surge uh, and I have to match it. And if I do, then I can ride this group to the finish line and use my sprinty legs against them. You know, as I catch on to the group, you'll notice that I, I keep rolling towards the front. I want to get up towards the front of this group just in case the surge is hard again. I want a sag climb. I want a few wheels that will come around me um, so that I can, so that it's harder to lose connection to the group. All right, so we've made it over the top. Now we're doing the final descent. It's getting fast again. Everybody's getting cooled off. It feels so much better. You know, at this point, my legs actually feel really good, despite being kind of kind of tired earlier. You know, once I cool off, I feel good. But we can see people are losing wheels up ahead of me, like three wheels ahead. There's a big gap. And somebody got off the front. This is a, a guy, a lone rider from Velo Kings, uh, who attacked over the top of the climb. And turns out he's a really good time trialist. Um, 
And so he gets up the road and people are sort of like losing wheels on this descent, which is surprising. Descents are great. It should be easy to hold the draft. I'm getting a little frustrated here, uh, considering whether I should jump across to this group that's, uh, that's getting ahead trying to chase this, this lone rider or whether I should let the, let the guys in front of me see if they can close it down. The guy in front of my, at the, the lead of my little group here is, uh, he's on his hood, straight up, sitting straight up at almost 40 miles an hour, not even riding aerodynamically. So I'm really wondering if we're gonna make this connection. But we've made it, this is, this is the final flat section of the race. This is my time, so I've gotta make a decision. Ultimately, I decide to I decide to sit in and roll turns with this group. So there's four people up the road right now. One guy who's way off the front, time trialing away, and three guys who are chasing. And I'm happy to roll turns right here, even though we're we're maybe two miles from the finish line, mile and a half from the finish line. Let's just roll hard turns. Let's let's catch these guys. You know, there's a lot of people in this group that don't want to see the race get away from them. Regretfully here, it looks like Yuhan almost attacks the group and the rotation kind of breaks down a little bit. Jumping ahead just a little bit here, uh, somebody hops on the front. I can't quite see who it is. It's really hard to see what's going on when everybody's guttered. We see somebody from the chase up ahead get come back like a boat anchor. Um, and uh, But we're rolling fast. We're rolling fast and we're guttering each other. Um, so the wind's coming from the right, everybody's pushed up against the left-hand side of the road, and I'm doing my damnedest to try and get a little bit closer to the line than the guy in front of me so that I can get a little bit of a draft from him, at least a half draft. So there's three people up the road, and one of them is going to come back in just a little bit. And so at a moment, we are going to be sprinting for third place. As you can tell from the camera angle, it's really hard to see up the road, but we're getting pretty close to the finish line. I think we're going to see the 1K to go marker in just a moment. You can see the guy two wheels up is starting to lose the wheel. Luckily, my buddy and George is in front of me and decides to uh, come around so I get a nice draft while following him to close the gap. People are getting really tired in this crosswind. Uh, and I, could, I just get a peek at the finish line and I decide it's time to go and luckily this, this guy in the LHCC, you can see first on his butt, comes around me, puts in his sprint, and I just have enough snap to get around him right before the line to come in for third place. Catherine Creek Road Race. Stage one, third place, not too bad.